For example, a woman is with her partner and she leaves him and it's like a, obviously like a sexual partner. It's like they're, they were one person and they've been ripped apart. Yeah. And then you, the man, right, are also with another woman and ripped apart and this keeps, but a part of them is always still there. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm here back. Same again with Emil, with Ivan. And today we're going to be talking about Christian dating. Uh, some of us are a bit old and we've gone through that phase and we're married having kids. But I think it's a pretty good topic to speak about because there's a lot of bad advice out there, right? We, we're treating Christian dating the same as what non-believers would do, right? Uh, with Christianity, when you look at the New Testament, especially what Jesus speaks about relationship and marriage, and also the apostles, like uh, uh, Paul, what he speaks about how a Christian should live prior to marriage, we see that there is a certain standard that Christians need to abide in, right? So that's something important for us as Christians to uphold those standards while we're looking for a partner because we know it's part of God's command that we are to be fruitful and multiply right to to find a person to share this life with yes. to serve God with as well as having offspring so why don't we actually start with the beginning of that you want to get into Christian dating who's your ideal partner right what do you guys think of that? Could someone say, like, for example, I could just date anyone, right? I think it's it's pretty clear uh, in the Bible that uh, if, if you're a Christian, that you should be finding someone who's, you know, as yourself, a Christian, follow mm -hmm. someone who loves Christ. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe in general, um, uh, as a human being, you know, this whole dating thing, it, it and, and relationships, sexual relationships, intimacy, it can go really wrong. But but God is there giving us this advice, giving us, you know, the person who created us is telling us how you need to go about things. And I think we're going to open up in a lot of those discussions, but one of those is in the Bible is who you should choose. Now, uh, I think we're, we all agree that if you're a Christian, uh, you shouldn't be looking outside um, someone who's not a Christian as yourself mm -hmm. uh, in that, that level. Maybe not at the same level of faith. I mean, you can help each other, but um, obviously maybe if someone's weak, weaker, and, and but generally in the same faith. Okay. That's true. I've heard a person before, because I've worked with a lot of youth guys, um, I've heard, like, I was talking to someone, I said, hey, um, you know, like, you're getting to that age, obviously, you're looking for a relationship, and, you know, you want to start looking to date and get married, um, who, who you're interested in, he's like, oh, well, I'm not really interested in Christian girls, because they're boring, right, or it could go the other way around, like, you know, girls were like, I'm not really interested in Christian guys, because they're boring, right, like, they do their churchy stuff, I'm really looking for someone that's more fun, outgoing, stuff like that. So, what do you guys think of that? Well, I would, I would question that <laughs> person's Christianity. <laughs> okay, yeah, true. Uh, Their I mean, perspective they're, they're on... saying that it, you can't just say that Christians are boring. I mean, uh, uh, anyone who's a Christian can be any, uh, you know, uh, like different um, type of person, type of personality. It's very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know how someone can say that. But... Yeah. Um, I think what where people make the mistake is uh, when Paul talks about where if your partner is an unbeliever and then he gives the person an option and he says, oh, well, maybe you can change that person as an unbeliever. But what we need to really correct here is the context is that you that context was they were together before they knew about Christianity and then one of them became a Christian. And so the question was, well, should I now break up? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is like they're already together, and they're like, "Should we break up?" Yeah. And he and then here we are talking about people. They're not together. They're a Christian, and they're like, "Well, should I, you know, join with someone yeah. who isn't a Christian?" Uh, but Paul gives that option. He says, "Look, if if you haven't 
um, you know, if, if the person doesn't want you, then let them go. Uh, but the point is, the context is they weren't Christians when they were met. They were already together, and then they became Christian. Cool. That's yeah. different to when you are a Christian and you're looking for someone. Yeah, and keep in mind, this is they're married. They're not just going out. They're married. Yeah. So if it's just, oh, she's your, you know, girlfriend, girlfriend, and she's refusing to become a Christian and respect your, um, your religion, then find somebody else. You're not, there's no commitment. Um, try, of course, try for that person's sake as well. But if, if you can see that it's not going anywhere, then no point. But going back to that person, uh, whether it's a woman, man, whatever, if they're looking for a partner that's fun, then I think they're, you know, they're going to find that that relationship is not going to work. Let's, let's, let's even put like religion aside, even if you're just looking for a partner, even if it's not. You know, the target is not a Christian or anything. If you're looking for a partner, it's just they're, they're fun. Do you think they're always going to be fun? Do you think when they're in their 30s, they're still going to be entertaining and fun for you? No, they're not going to They're not going to be working. They're not going to be coming back tired and they don't have time to go do activities and things like that. Are you going to get bored of them and just say, you know what, let's get divorced? Because that's what happens. That's, what, that's where most of divorce is. It's just... They're not the person I thought they were. It's all about me, 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 my happiness, my joy. That's all temporary. Yeah. People change. People grow older. People, unfortunately, get responsibilities and cannot entertain you anymore. So if your idea of a perfect mate is entertainment, is they're entertaining, then you're in for a surprise. Because, or not, not so much. You're going to end up yeah, in that's, divorce. That's absolutely... It's, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's why I believe uh, the Bible really guides a person and, and the Bible teaches us things like, you know, commitment and marriage. Mm -hmm. And I think biologically things can, can go, we can really mess things up. Yeah. And uh, so for me, relationships was very, uh, you know, God's word was a very strong influence on, on me. And even to the point that I, I would pray and ask God, who do you want me to be with? So uh, that's, I think, one of the biggest things um, when you want to find someone. But I just want to talk on what a lot of people are doing. I think people are taking secular ideas, worldly ideas, and keeping those ideas when they're in church. Uh, so one thing I guess I want to talk about, and this is just my opinion, uh, is about teenage um, dating. So uh, I'll, I'll open it up to you guys as well, but I complete. I think that teenage dating is just out of the question. Um, it goes against some of the things that Emil was talking about. Uh, it's because of those things Emil was talking about. Um, you cannot practice to have a good relationship. So in a teenage dating, people see it as like, a, oh, I want to get some practice. I want to get practice at relationships. So I can get good at it and, and have, but ironically, that practice is the thing that is, is going to sabotage your future relationship, your future long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, especially, I mean, for, for a woman, mm -hmm. the, the most attractive thing that a man finds in a woman is her virtue and chastity, right? So it's, it's her being modest and, and, and not. So if, if a, a girl in her teens is going out and dating, she's never going to find someone who wants to commit because naturally a man wants a person who has virtue. A man doesn't want to commit his whole life and work and time and effort to a woman who maybe will leave him in a few years, who will think she's not fun in a few years. So it's ironic that a lot of these worldly ideas um, people are taking on, you know, date, dating in a, your teens. You're not going to gain nothing. From, you're not going to learn nothing from dating in your teens, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a good relationship you can learn from God's word, right? The other idea that people um, have is pre... So the Bible talks about marriage and then sexual relations, right? So you, you understand what is marriage. Marriage is a lifelong commitment. That is the point of marriage. That is what you're saying when you say marriage. So marriage then sexual relationships, because God knows, God created you, and he knows that a sexual relationship produces offspring, and a sexual relationship means there has to be a lifelong commitment, 
you can't leave after three years and you know woman's having put the baby and is now you know are vulnerable and, and stuff so god knows you no know, sexual relationship produces offspring and um and that's why it needs to be a you need to say that you are committed to this person for your whole life and people are like oh no sexual relations before you know try it maybe i don't like the person and that is just going completely it's not just god is telling you the right way but you're going against your actual nature you're going yeah. against your actual you know cre creation i think that's that's pretty important and and i've i've, I've noticed that currently um some churches are a bit shy about talking about these things mm -hmm. And the reason that they shy is because they be scared to lose their youth, their young ones, mm -hmm. their teenagers. But I think we just need to be pretty straightforward, man. It's just you, just you gotta... just one point. Don't you think they're already lost if they're doing if they're engaging in that behavior? <laughs> yeah, I mean, ironically, they're afraid to they're afraid to lose the youth, but the youth are being lost. Oh, because uh, of, yeah. of not hearing that word. <laughs> uh, I'm not talking about in the sense that, uh, like, you know, the the youth of the church, they're going at it. Not not that kind of thing. I'm talking about they're afraid to give them relationship advice. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, in the sense of, like, okay, he's a teenager. He knows what he's doing. Mm. He can make his own decision. Instead of having, like, <clears throat> fatherly and motherly figures in the church, mm. as Paul says, <clears throat> that to teach the younger men and the women on how to find the right man, how to to kind of put boundaries in your dating self experience, yeah. self-control, having accountability, um, having people to answer to as well, right, and report back. And I know some people that, for example, if there are a couple going on a date, they'll go on a double date with an uh, older couple in the church or in their family members to kind of have a more, you know, more civilized conversations and so on instead of finding yourself in a hotel room or in the back of a car. Mm. It's, I, I find it like there is that big disconnect between the young ones and the really old people in the church. And I think the older people in the church feel like if I tell that person what to do or give them an advice, it seems like you're an old person. What what do you know about my mm, that's current true. culture? Maybe they feel a bit awkward about because you yeah. know maybe the generation gap and double dating and but like but that. that wasn't a thing. If mm. you go a bit, you know, twenty thirty years ago, it was like parents would talk to their kids mm. and say, "Okay, you like that person." Let's meet their family. Let's mm -hmm. let's guide this relationship yeah. and move it forward. And all the meetings and that you'd have with that person would be supervised by her family, your family. Either sometimes they'd even bring, like for example, the girl would bring her sister along, yeah, yeah. or her brother along, or or you know you'd bring your sister along, or somebody is, or or there would be a third like a third party person that's not connected, yeah. like. In that relationship, obviously, because it's between two people. Um, and they would be kind of like the witnesses. Mm. Making sure everything's going right and there's no one's overstepping certain boundaries. And that's where it is. It's about boundaries. That's the important thing is setting boundaries. Because we know, biologically, we are designed to procreate. Right? It's our, it's our nature. It's our nature that we want to, you know, have intercourse. Now... We're going against our nature by, you know, having self-control. We're saying, no, I'm in control of this. It's not my nature, which is, let's be honest, not always the best thing for me following my nature, right? Because otherwise, why would I have one partner? I could have yeah. many, right? That in my nature is to spread my seed as many as, to as many women as possible, yeah. you know? Like, that's... And, and that kind of brings that connection that if you're not dating to get married you're setting yourself for failure. Exactly. And a lot of teenagers would not be happy with what we've been talking about the last 20 minutes because in their mind, they think, no, we know what we're doing. And we're like, we've been in your place. Yeah, you we know. thought the same thing, right? When we heard people in their late 20s or 30s or 40s telling us how relationship functions, we're like, no, nope, you just... That's that may be just you, but I'm different to you. You're like, no, we're all men. 
we're all the same when it comes to our core being right in our nature so the idea is that if you want to be alone with that person you need to ask yourself a question why right if you're there to have a conversation have a good time for example you could do that in the cinema right there's plenty of people watching the same movie you're still in a public space but if you really want to be alone why mm -hmm. people need to ask their question yeah. that and i don't know how christian families let their 13 14 year old children go on dates and start dating it doesn't i can't i cannot comprehend it i'm like if what are they dating for like are they gonna get married next year or something it like it doesn't make sense to me mm -hmm. if you're an adult and you're dating someone fair enough you're ready to get married you're working you're getting your life together fair enough but to let young teenagers do that what are you trying to do i mean even at age 16 or, or yeah something. even then like i mean what, look there have you going there, with that there has been very few people maybe they got together dating in this when age mm. 16 and they saw it out to the end mm. but but um the odds are against you yeah that's like one in a hundred maybe because uh during that time in your teens you, your, your brain is not fully developed until around your mid-20s and the part of your brain that regulates your hormones so you have hormones at age what 12 13 14 onwards yeah raging hormones right <laughs> the, the the ones that tell you to procreate <laughs> yeah and then um but so you've got raging hormones you've got an underdeveloped uh prefrontal cortex which is the one that regulates one that makes you think about consequences right that doesn't come into play until about 20 25 for men sometimes even in their 30s even yeah mm. so for men it's later as well so you're setting yourself up for failure uh, the yeah. odds are against you and and also on that point is that you said some people you know they they go through that and they get married eventually mm -hmm. but between the age of 16 until say 26 for the guy mm -hmm. i mean let's be honest how many times have you gone through that temptation and how many times have you fallen right you're in a 10-year relationship with that girl mm -hmm how often did you guys sleep with each other mm -hmm. right and you can't just look back and say oh well we're married now and whatever happened happened god holds every sin accountable right and all these sins and th this is a big issue is people think i've had sex oh, a year ago i've asked god for forgiveness it's all gone mm -hmm. it's got no effect for me in the future no that sin has a psychological effect yeah. for your future relationship yeah. mm -hmm. and and that's why you have issues with people committing. um committing and not only committing but also um looking at their partner and in light of their previous partners mm -hmm. right? right and and start comparing uh the sexual experiences yeah. and and other things if our body is a temple and that belongs to God alone. Why is people going back and forth through my body? Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's funny because your uncle, I remember he made, uh, he did a thing where he preached to us when we were younger. And he brought up a similar point where it's like when, for example, a woman is with her partner and she leaves him. And it's like, a, obviously, like a sexual partner. It's like they they were one person and they've been ripped apart. Yeah. And then you, the man, right are also with another woman and sh ripped apart and this keeps but a part of them is always still there yeah there's the remnants and then when you finally get together like the woman's been with many you've been like the man if i see you but i mean like the man yeah. has been with many apologies um, That's right. yeah and the remnants of that does affect your relationship it does affects it spiritually psychologically and physically so there's ramifications for that previous. Yeah. I've, heard, I've heard a very similar example, but with Velcro. So with Velcro, you know, it's yeah. the first attach is very strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you rip it, you attach it again. It's weaker. You keep doing that. Eventually, there's no attachment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's, ripping apart. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was I was gonna say that because you're so 
used to many breakups, yeah. your marriage will be just another breakup. Yeah. Yeah. It numbs That's, you. Yeah, it, it numbs, numbs you. you. And just in case you might think, uh, where are we getting the idea of when you are sexually, you know, having an intercourse with someone that you are spiritually one? That's actually in First Corinthians chapter 6. Speaks about that when someone is sleeping with a harlot, they are becoming one with them. So, uh, I mean, obviously, it doesn't have to be a prostitute. It could be any other person. You, when you are connecting yourself spiritually with someone and you're having the act of sex with someone, to God, you're spiritually becoming one. And when you leave that person, you're just breaking that relationship apart. And, and if you do that continuously, then you, you obviously the the fun part of it is there and it's kind of putting a cover over the pain over the future struggles that you're going to experience but until you get out of that lifestyle and you take your faith seriously and you find a relationship then you start to see the big struggles mm -hmm. so is there. there hope for someone who maybe uh, has made all these mistakes but wants to repent and wants to change their way where's you, the healing you know what there is healing there there is hope and there is restoration but the reality of it there once we are forgiven we know there is no condemnation for us in christ we repent mm -hmm. i'm not saying you sleep with someone on Saturday night, Sunday morning, you go to church for forgiveness and you do that repeat. I'm, no, repentance as in I'm no longer going to be doing that. Mm. I, I get that. But as Christians, there are consequences mm. to our sins. And it's not because God can't 100% heal us. It's a lesson for us to learn from. Yeah, like okay. if you had a kid from your previous marriage... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Or, or, and, and then, like, a let's previous say, relationship. Yeah. A previous relationship. Sorry, not previous marriage. And um, let's say, you know, you're like, oh, I repented from that. And now I'm married to a different woman. Yeah, but this the consequence is still there. The kid well, is still there. The kid's still there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or let, let, let's say, let's say, for example, you you get a a, a lifelong um, sexually transmitted disease. Yeah. You may repent, but and so and you might experience miraculous healing. Maybe. But some or maybe you want to. yeah maybe I, I think maybe there's a lesson to be learned. i think yeah. it depends on, really on your heart if it's a true repentance and it's a true coming to god and turning away from those some of these miracles can happen you know god can open doors in different ways mm -hmm. um even even if there's a kid or something like god can just open yeah. doors financially and yeah. but and, but you should not play with this it has know, to be genuine because there are ever plays with could be, yeah yeah fire. And, and that doesn't only include relationships. For example, uh, and unfortunately, I've seen people who have abused drugs for mm -hmm. years. When they became a Christian, those drugs still have effect on their mind, yeah. on, on, on their body. And even they, they confess that they say, look, I'm not 100% there on my mind because drugs have ruined me. But at least now I'm healed. I'm healed from it. I'm no longer practicing it, and I have Christ in my life. But the physical so, problems. Yeah. So it's 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 a sensitive topic. It it's is definitely a sensitive it topic. It's tough. I think yeah. I think that if you're genuine and you run to God with all your heart, you, you can yeah. get miraculous. Yeah. But it's God's will, not ours. Yeah, God's will. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, what is your advice for Christian dating? Let's close it. Let's close it with that. What do you, what would you share as your advice be? So uh, the main part of dating intimacy uh, is is producing offspring. That's that's why we do it. Um, that's mm. and and God knows that. So um, any rela intimate relationship, I would say, is a lifelong commitment. Right. Yeah. Treat it as that. So, so make the decision. You know, do you want to start? You can't lifelong commit to four or five different people when you're in your teens. You know, I think people really need to treat it, give it the weight that it that it is, and not treat it as if just something that people do. Mm. Um, yeah, nice. And the the Bible, God's word, was the thing that taught me the right way for relationships, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, it's worked so far. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nice, nice, agreed. I, I think it's about, um, about being patient, having self control. And also seeking guidance from maybe people that are married and have had a long 
you know, marriage in, in the church, you know, el maybe an elder or even a pastor, uh, you know, somebody that you can look up to, uh, you know, in the faith and ask them to kind of help guide you in your relationship. Yeah. Or if you're looking for a relationship, even in that, who to look for, what to look for and um, how to go from there. Oh, great, man. Um, God put that in my heart, um, Genesis 2.20. Um, so Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help, helper comparable to him. In a perfect world, Adam still recognized that there was something missing. And uh, that's that's what relationship is, is that you're finding someone that can fill that huge missing part of your life. That you'll do life together, you'll have a family together, you serve the Lord together, and you enjoy the best moments together, and you also enjoy the worst moments together. So if you're going to just simplify it to this girl is just pretty and hot and I just want to sleep with her, or this guy is might be wealthy and he's going to provide me with all the nice bags that I want to get, um, you're r looking for the wrong person. And in order for you to help yourself to get out of that, is you need to change your mindset. Start seeing the purpose of what a relationship is from God's point of view, and also what marriage is. Mm -hmm. Once you find that, you start to slowly find satisfaction in your partner, right? Despite not having all these best features that you're looking for in them. So that's my encouragement for you. If Adam noticed in a perfect world that there was something missing, how about us? Yeah. We're looking for that person. Leave it in God's hand and trust in God. And do things wisely. Don't don't be too proud where you think you know it all. You don't need any advice. Um, all people are just, you know, outdated and they don't know anything about relationship. No, there are people who have been married for 50 years. They, they, they would see themselves in you already. When you make mistakes, they're like, yeah, I made that before. We're, there's nothing new under the sun. That's what my point is. So take people's advice Follow the word of God and let the Holy Spirit lead you. That's my encouragement to you. So God bless you. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and take care.